Thinking outside the box, there is yet another way of creating vignette effects. That's using 3D lights. I'm going to open Composition 1.5, 3D Lighting Starter. I've done a separate course on this technique called Lighting Tricks in After Effects, but I'll go over it quickly here. Let's go ahead and move the time marker later to where we actually see the eye. I'm going to turn on the 3D layer switch for this shot. Now it is 2D footage, and I'm going to leave it as full frame 2D footage, but I need it to be a 3D layer to receive 3D lights. Next, I'm going to go to Layer, New, Light. The most flexible type of light is a spotlight because you get to control its cone angle and its cone feather. I'm going to start with a default of 100% intensity. I'm going to set the color to white initially. You can indeed use colored lights, maybe something a little bit warm to warm up some footage or something a little bit cool to cool it down, but white is my starting point. You don't need shadows, and shadows are one of the biggest render hits in After Effects, so I'm going to turn that checkbox off for now and click OK. Now you'll see my 2D footage is being illuminated by this 3D light. I've got the point of interest, which is where the light is being aimed, and the back of the light, which is where basically the light bulb is. I'm going to go ahead and use those two points to allow me to create a bit of a shaped light. Now I could just put them right on top of each other and create a perfect circle, but I'm going to take advantage of the fact that this whole thing can be picked up and aimed to create a little bit different of a light shape. You can drag directly in the axis arrows, that pulls it in, pulls it away, pull it to the right, pull it up or down. There's my shaped light. I'm going to use that as a starting point. Whenever you need to see the 3D parameters of a layer, the shortcut is AA, two A's in quick succession. When I do that, I get all of my light's parameters. I get the intensity, I could even really blow this out and go beyond 100% for a stylized look, or just give the amount of illumination I want, so maybe somewhere around there. I can change the color of the light if I wanted to, just maybe say to warm it up a little bit, something in that range. Now you see it's a little bit warmer. I can alter how wide the cone angle is to illuminate the whole face before, after, or tighten it down to be something much more focused, and also change the feather. What is that fall off? A hard circle, something that's very gradual. Broaden that out. Maybe look around there. Now the real trick of 3D lights in After Effects is that the light is only half the work. To really dial something in, you also want to play around with the material options for the layer receiving the light. So again, select the layer and type AA, the universal 3D parameter shortcut. I'll scroll down, and I have separate controls over how I mix diffuse and specular together, and control over the size of my specular hotspot. I like to increase shininess, which is the size of the specular, to create something very intense there in a corner, increase my diffuse to get the overall lighting that I want, then separately adjust the specular parameter to decide how much of a hotspot I want. I can make something really burned out there right in the corner of the white of the eye or have no effect at all. I like to pump things up, so let's go somewhere around there. So we went from this to this by using 3D lights to create effects. I like using lighting to create this sort of vignetting effect because it gives me a lot of creative options. The one disadvantage is that this does not create an alpha channel. And for some of the advanced techniques we're going to be showing in the next chapter, you want an alpha channel so that you can blend together multiple layers of footage.